Hi, this is a, a project for a PWM uh, fan controller. Um, traditional fan controllers are uh, linear, and that means that uh, if you, let's say, run the fans at 6 volts, then you're burning the other half uh, as heat, and they got very hot, they burned out, they weren't reliable. Uh, the more efficient way of doing it is to use PWM fans. So obviously you have to buy fans capable of PWM control. And those would be any of the fans that have four wires, and the fourth pin will be blue colored, and that's the PWM input. Uh, I built a new PC, and it's pretty high end. Uh, it's got a 2x140 radiator, it's just the Corsair X or H110, I think. Uh, between it and the case, I don't think any of my fans ended up being PWM except the CPU cooler. Or no, actually, I guess I didn't use the Intel one, I used the water pump. So yeah, actually, I don't think, I think the two that came with my case might have been PWM. But either way, half of them are, half of them aren't. And the ones that are plugged in straight to my motherboard, and I'm using the ASUS fan profile. So if you do something like unzipping a file, you can hear the fans ramp up. Uh, and, and just even when you're idling, the ones that aren't PWM controlled are really loud. I think those are actually the ones on my radiator. And it is obnoxious how loud uh, it is. And when I do the final video to uh, show you the finished product in the case, I actually took audio of the case before and then I'll have an after and I'll switch back and forth so you can hear the, the sound level difference. But it's pretty loud and obnoxious and that's not ideal. I like my cases to be very quiet. Not fanless quiet, you know, for passive heating, but I want it to be pretty silent. So I wanted to do a fan controller. And the problem is all the fan controllers, it's not the price, they're pretty reasonably priced. It's just they're over-engineered. There's an LCD screen, they show you all the different fan speeds. I don't care about the fan speed. All I care about is the noise. I want the fans running as fast as they'll go without being obnoxiously loud. And I want a quick, easy way to adjust the fan speeds. And I don't want extra software stealing CPU cycles in my OS uh, just to get this fan control. So I decided to whip up my own as a fun project. So what I did is uh, I got my Arduino Uno. This is probably one of my R3 ones because I don't remember the R2s having pin labels uh, on the female headers. And then I got an Adafruit Proto Shield, which if you are going to replicate my project, um, I would recommend using SparkFun's Proto Shield. It's got an open top. Um, Adafruit's kind of has some specialized spots to solder on um, some chips. And there's even a spot for uh, like a uh, some SMD stuff. I don't know if you can see. And it, it kind of takes away your workspace. Um, if you're doing something specifically, like you're going to put on a 7000 series logic chip on the top, uh, this would probably work better. But if, if you're doing something like what I just did, you would probably want the uh, extra open space that the uh, SparkFun one has. But either way, I made this one work. It works fine. I, there wasn't any point to ordering a SparkFun one and waiting for it, so I just got started. <laughs> Um, 0.1 inch male headers actually fit Molex fan connectors perfectly. You just need to bend one of the pins outward just a hair to make it snug because I don't want it coming loose inside the computer. Um, oh, for power, uh, I'm getting it from a female Molex connector. And it turns out uh, the Molex power inside your PC has two voltages. Uh, red is 5 volts, which is what the Arduino runs at, or at least the Uno. Uh, and the yellow wire is 12 volts, which is what the fans runs at the fans are run at. And the uh, two center black pins are common. Um, so for now, so I can get that to focus, um, I'm just using alligator leads and I'm powering it with one of my bench top power supplies. So as you can see, channel one is 12 volts, channel two, five volts. And so once I get this in the computer, all I, all I gotta do to power it is to plug it into one of the uh, Molex power pins, or power cables, I mean. <laughs> Um, so I guess I'll give you a demonstration. I ramble on too much, so I'll give you a demo first. As you can see, this is one of the five and a quarter bay plugs, or panels, I don't know what you want to call it. Uh, I pulled it out. I actually went and bought a drill press for this. I've never owned a drill press, and I kind of wish I would have bought one sooner. It's not the best one, but I'm just doing simple hobby stuff, so I don't need a super precise one. I just bought the cheap Ryobi. I think it was 120 bucks at Home Depot. Used it to drill a 16 millimeter hole, and then this is a native fruit momentary push button. It's a stainless steel one with an LED ring. Uh, what I like about this, it's small, it's chic, it's panel mount, 
uh, you can pick different colors for it. I picked white to match the rest of my PC. Uh, and the LED ring on here is separately controlled from the actual uh, button. So the button and the LED are completely separate components here. And so I was going to use the button for, for human input to select modes. And then I was going to use the LED as visual output for the user. So, you know, I'll click the button and it'll switch to the next mode and then it'll flash a certain number of times to let me know what mode it's in. Because all I really want is quietest, optimal, and then full blast. So I actually have one more mode than that right now, but I'll show you. I don't actually have the, uh, it's the middle three pins are for, sorry if I can get that to focus. Not very well. Okay, the middle three pins are for the switch. One's normally open, one's nor normally closed, and the other one's common. And then the outside two are to power the LED. So those are really close, to, too close to use alligator clips for. So for the button, just for proof of concept for t testing the sketch, uh, I'm just using a, a tactile button on a breadboard with a 10k pull down resistor, and I'm just reading for high whenever I pull. And I'm I'm not doing hardware debouncing. It's overkill for something like this. Uh, I, have a, I have some pretty good software solutions, even without using interrupts. So I'll show you uh, how I did that in the second part of the video. So anyways, uh, I'll switch through the mode. So right now it's in mode one. That's what it defaults to, which is the quiet, it, the lowest possible setting. It's set at zero. But it's at the lowest. Push the button. Now it's in mode two. So blink twice to let you know it's in mode two. And in this case, two is the highest I can get the fans without them making a uh, noticeable amount more noise. So now it's mode 3. So you see it flash three times. This is optimal. I still have to tweak these. This is just some uh, really random arbitrary numbers I kind of chose that I thought would be in the ballpark. But once I get them in the case, I'm going to have to fine tune them. And if I push it again, it'll go to 4, which is full blast. And uh, just for testing, I have every fan connected. Um, th these are Rosewill Hypoborea fans, which are kind of new eggs. I don't want to say off-brand. These actually seem like they're pretty decent quality. Um, the five big ones are 140 millimeter, and the one on the end is 120. So if I push the button again, it blinked once, so now it's back to uh, mode one. It's just round robin. When it gets to the last mode, when you push it again, it loops back to mode one. So there's mode two, mode three. And mode four. So it's pretty simple. Let's look at current load just in case you're curious. Uh, mode one is pulling about 160 milliamps. Mode two, about 270, 260 ish. Takes a second for the subtle because obviously during acceleration it's going to draw more current. Three, which is what I call optimal, about 400 milliamps. And then Mode 4, obviously you saw it peak over 1 amp, but it settles back down to just under an amp. It's at 960-ish milliamps. So, it's not, not too bad. Nothing, nothing to worry about considering I'm running this off of a 1200-watt uh, power supply. And I think 12-volt rail on my supply has 100 amps. So, yeah, not going to be a problem at all. Um, I thought about doing a, f a female... USB jack like this one. I found a panel mount one. I actually ordered a few just to have on hand. But I don't think I'm going to mount it to here. It would make it easier to do fine tuning later on, but I think I'm just going to set it, get it tuned and set, and then close the case and not have to worry about it. And it kind of uglies up the front. I think just having nice little single buttons is more elegant. So uh, I think that's what I'll go with. Um, I think that's everything. Um... Yeah, I think I covered everything. Um, the second half of the video, I'm going to cover the code and how I actually did it. Um, it's pretty simple. It's kind of a proof of concept. I might fine-tune it and tweak it a little bit, but uh, um, yeah, that's it. I guess we'll go to the code now. Okay, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and cover um, the, the programming code side of uh, the fan controller project. So this is for the Arduino Uno, so obviously it's Arduino environment, Arduino IDE, which is uh, C++. So basically we have fan speed, uh, which is just a variable that literally holds the fan speed, which is 0 through 55 in the Arduino Uno's case. And then we have the fan mode, which would be the 1 through 4, but it's 0 indexed. 
so it starts at zero instead of one. So that's mode one, two, three, four. Uh, here's a setup loop. Well, it's not really a loop, but this is a setup method. Um, pin two is the LED ring. It's obviously output. Um, and then we're turning it on because by default I want the ring to always be on, letting me know that you know the fan controller is working and the fans are on. Because if you know the low setting's quiet enough. Uh, I might not be able to actually tell if the fans are on or off, which obviously if they're not on, that could be really bad for hardware. Um, pin 4 is input, it's the uh, it's going to be wired to the button. And then these are all the PWM pins, all six of them. And then I turn on serial just for debugging purposes, but uh, for the final thing, I'll obviously turn that off. And this is the main loop. And inside the main loop, um, basically the entire thing is just inside of this if block. We read pin 4, and if it's high, which is 5 volts, because it's normally being pulled down to ground via the 10k pull-down resistor, if it reads high, then it comes inside this if block. And the first thing it does is we see what fan what the fan mode is currently set to. Uh, if it's 3, is basically 4, because it's 0 index. So if it's less than 3, we're going to just increment it. And then if it if it is 3, then we need to increment back to uh, mode 1. So this goes back to mode one. So all this all this does is just does the the round robin. So it starts at zero, and then it adds one, adds one, and then finally, uh, once it's three, th three is not less than three. So we go down to the else section and set it back to one. Pretty simple. Uh, this is just a switch statement for um, deciding what speed for uh, each mode is. So mode 1 is the lowest, mode 4 is the highest. These I just kind of pick some arbitrary numbers that are what I think are in the ballpark, but I'll probably change them. And you know, instead of doing this one, the si this is the kind of the loudest I can get it while it's still silent, I thought about getting rid of that in the final version and just doing lowest, highest, and optimal in the middle. That way it's less modes I have to cycle through because I can't think of when, or you know, inst or get rid of this and then leave this one, you know get them as high as I can before I can start to hear them and that would essentially be the same as this only it would actually be moving more air but I'm not sure yet uh, here's just uh, output for debugging to the serial console and then here's where we actually write the changes to the fans um, blue pin which uh, the PWM fans actually have their own PWM controller on board so as soon as I send uh, pulse with signal in, the fans will change their own speed, which is why these fans are so handy. And then, uh, this is where we actually blink the LED ring on the button for visual output to the user so they know what mode it's in, and all it is is a for loop. But because it's zero indexed, as you can see, obviously mode one would not blink at all. Mode two would only blink once, so that's why what I had to do, instead of just doing less than fan mode, I had to do a less than or equal to fan mode. And then I delay, turn it off, delay, turn it back on. And the reason I have the delays, um, even at 16 megahertz, the Arduino runs so fast that if I didn't put delays in here, it would turn off and on so quickly that the human eye would not even be able to tell that the LED turned off at all. So I did 160 milliseconds, which I think should be about right. It looked okay. Maybe I can speed it up just a hair. Um, and then this is just a software latch that I use to make my software debouncing work better. So what this does, um, even a 16 megahertz, the Arduino is so quick it'll go all the way, th all the way through all this code and down to the end of this if block before you'll be uh, before you can even release the uh, button so then it'll go back into this loop and then it's gonna increment the fan mode again and so in that quick button press it's gonna loop through here so fast it's gonna go looping through the fan mode possibly hundreds of times I haven't actually I should test it to see how many times it'll happen before I can release that button but it's an incredibly high number so what I do is I jump inside this loop while I'm still holding the button down. That way it does not leave this if block until it's released. So you push the button and boom it zips through all this code in a blink of an eye and then it gets caught inside of this loop because basically while pin 4 is high which means the button's held down we loop and there's obviously it doesn't do anything it just loops and then when it's done it breaks out of the if and waits for you to push the button for the next time which 
if you don't push it again, then it'll keep skipping out of this if block because it doesn't meet this condition. Um, I did originally have a delay in here, but that's before I did the uh, digital or visual output. When I do the visual output, there's two delays in here, and that makes it enough to where I don't need to put this delay in here. But if this block right here did not exist, then I would want to enable that delay just to catch any. There shouldn't be any bouncing when you let go of a button, but just in case, you usually want some kind of a delay in there since we're doing software debouncing. But that is, that's really honestly the whole thing. It's pretty simple. It took me like 10 minutes to whip it up, if that. Um, final version, I might tweak. Um, right now, this one variable gets written to every single pin, so each fan runs at the exact same speed. But final version, I think it would be ideal to be able to tune the fans individually. So if these two, for example, are uh, the ones straight up against the radiator, I figured that um, you'd want to run those lower than you would the ones on the front and back of the case because those don't have any obstructions. They're not against any kind of grills, so they don't make much noise versus the ones against the radiator will be pretty loud, if you know what I mean. So... Right now, I can't, but in the final version, before I put it in, in the computer case, that's probably what I'm going to do. And I actually need to write a different sketch for being able to do... Um, what I'm going to do is make one to where I can run the Arduino with the fans inside the case, and then open the serial console, and then send it commands to manually set each fan speed. That way I can fine-tune each fan speed, and then once I get the numbers, I can go back into this sketch and... Uh, hard code my config settings I guess so then uh, I'll be pretty much done I can slap it into the computer unplug it from the USB and then let it rock on its own but uh, that's it and if I can remember to I will put the code up on uh, github or I'll host it somewhere and put a link uh, in the YouTube video comments or details section I guess um, and that's it next video will be the finished product in the case and then I'll do a before and after sound comparison so you can see and um, I'll also try to put together like a parts list with links, so if you wanted to try to build this on your own, um, you should have everything you need. But uh, that's it. I will see you in the next video.